Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be evaluating um, a special value of the digamma function. Now something interesting about the digamma function is it doesn't have a very easy uh, explicit form that we're able to deal with. It only has that sum notation. And so those sums can often be pretty difficult to evaluate. However, they are definitely possible to evaluate. So although it doesn't have a simple closed form um, where we can really easy plug it, easily plug in numbers and get out elementary answers without doing any work, there are ways to actually evaluate it. So in this video, we're going to be evaluating digamma of one third. But the same strategy that we're going to use could be used to evaluate the digamma function evaluated at many different values. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. So we're going to be using the sum representation of the digamma function. Digamma of one third is equal to negative gamma plus the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n plus one minus one over n plus one third. Next, we're just going to multiply by three on the top and bottom in both of these fractions. Pretty straightforward. And bring this three outside. Random with one over three n plus three minus one over three n plus one. Next, we're going to um, use this super cool trick. So one way that we can write 1 over 3n plus 1 is we can actually write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 3n power. And you'll see why we're going to do this. The same thing is, using the same strategy, 1 over 3n plus 3 equals the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 3n plus 2 dx. And you can just prove this using the power rule. In general, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n is 1 over n plus 1. Um, obviously, n has to be greater than negative 1 for that to apply, but still. So, we're going to substitute these directly into our definition. We're going to have negative gamma plus 3 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. And then I'm just going to combine these two integrals since they have the same bounds and the same variable. Uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 3n plus 2 minus x to the 3n dx. Next, all we're going to do is exchange the summation and the integration. So this is going to equal 3. Now, this is actually an interesting uh, thing because usually when we exchange the order of summation and integration, we have the sum on the inside and we're bringing it outside in order to do an easier integral. Uh, you know, when we find the power series of some function and then we apply that and then we bring the sum to the outside. However, interestingly, in this case, we actually have the integral on the inside and we're going to bring it outside. So now we're going to have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Now I'm just going to reorganize this into x squared minus 1 times x to the 3n dx. And since this x squared minus 1 has nothing to do with this sum, we can just bring this out and switch those as well. x squared minus 1 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 3n, and we're going to write x to the 3n as x cubed to the n power. And then in order to evaluate this sum on the inside, it's just a super simple geometric series. Since x is between 0 and 1, or rather x cubed is between 0 and 1, we can apply the geometric series here. So we're just going to replace this with 1 over 1 minus x cubed. And then we can just rewrite this as a rational function, and all of a sudden, our day gamma function has turned into an integral. All right, now we just have to evaluate this integral. So the first thing we're going to do is factor out x, um, x minus 1 on the top and bottom. So let's write this in factored form. And then cancel that factor in the top and bottom. All right, so now we're going to have negative gamma minus 3 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Then we can just reorganize this where we're going to write this as x plus 1 half minus 3 halves the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 half over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. And let's make some more space in order to integrate. This first part is super simple. 
since 2x plus 1 is the derivative of x squared plus x plus 1, this is just going to be minus 3 halves natural log of x squared plus x plus 1. And for this one, we're just going to complete the square right here. So what that's going to look like is just x plus 1 half squared plus square root 3 over 2 squared. And then we're going to use our super handy trick for uh, integrating arctangent. So we're going to end up with negative 3 halves. Then we're going to divide by square root 3 over 2. So it's going to be 2 over square root 3. And then, yeah, and then we're going to have arctangent of x plus 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2. We can just bring that 3 on top to make it easier, or that 2 on top, sorry. So we can just write this as 2x plus 1. And this is going to be all evaluated at 1 and 0. Right? So overall, we're going to have negative gamma minus 3 halves, and then ln x squared plus x plus 1. When x is 1, that's just going to be ln 3. And when x is 0, that's just going to be ln 1, which is 0. So we don't need to worry about that. We can cancel these 2s right here and then just make this square root 3. So we're going to have minus square root 3. And when we plug in 1 for the arctangent term, uh, we're going to get 3 over square root 3, which is square root 3. And arctangent of square root 3 is just pi over 3. And then when we plug in 0, we're going to get 1 over square root 3, and arctangent of 1 over square root 3 is just pi over 6. On the inside here, we can just replace this with pi over 6, since that's what it's equal to. And then we can go ahead and cancel this square root 3 on the bottom, and we're going to get pi over 2 square root 3. And overall, that is our answer. All right, so uh, yeah, that trick that we just used there can be applied to pretty much any value of the digamma function. Uh, it does get more difficult as you deal with more, um, as you deal with a larger denominator. So if you have a smaller denominator, that's a, it's going to be a lot easier, you know, dealing with two or three or four versus five is much more difficult to deal with if you wanted to evaluate, say, digamma of one fifth. Six is actually a little bit easier to deal with uh, just because of the integral that comes out of it is actually relatively easily factorable. But then once you get to seven, it's just a whole big mess. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to do any more for this video because I think you guys get the premise and it's pretty easy to uh, figure out how to expand this to other values of the digamma function. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a really simple method, super easy to use, but it's absolutely something I think a lot of us uh, are going to need to know uh, when doing many of these uh, awesome integrals, you know, often. We'll get a cool little trick with the digamma function, you know, the reflection identity or um, digamma x plus 1 identity. But sometimes we won't be able to use those identities and we just have to evaluate them directly, evaluate the digamma function directly like this. So it's really important to know. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.